Hi, welcome to Rockdown. I'm Wendy Stapleton. Well, my special guest this evening started his musical career as a sax player with bands such as The Sapphires, The Thunderbirds and The Strangers, before going solo and achieving seven hits on the Australian charts. He later went on to London, where he starred in musicals such as Hair and Jesus Christ Superstar. Well, he's back home in Australia. Would you please welcome Mr Colin Cook. Well, thank you for being here with us this evening. Um, Colin, I know that your career has spanned many, many, many. Many, 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 yes. I don't mean going. many, many, many <laughs> but many decades. And I was just interested to, um, as I am with every guest, to find out where your career or musical career started. You weren't born in Australia, were you? I was born in India, actually, yes. Tell us a bit like about that. Cliff Richard was too, wasn't he? Yeah. I, I believe he yeah. was. Yeah, I was born in place called Dhaka, which was India then. My dad was in the uh, the military police, or the imperial police they called it. And uh, I was there for a few years. And they used to say when I was two years old, I used to stand in front of the brass band that played and jump around. But anyway, that was my first taste of music. And I remember my dad used to play the ukulele quite well, oh, and the go. harmonica as well. Mum? So, no, my mum didn't. Well, she had a good singing voice, actually. I well, must have go. taken that from my mum, side. And um, then we moved to England after the war. And I was there for about four years or three years or something. And then we came to Australia. To Melbourne? To Melbourne, yes. And uh, I went to Halleby College, and that's where I first started playing clarinet. Because they had a wonderful musical department. Yes, it, didn't yes. They? Yeah. yeah, they still have. They have yeah. a much better one now. But anyway, I, I learnt the clarinet there and when I left school, my teacher suggested I'd learn the saxophone, which I did because there's a lot more work around for saxophonists in those days. And then I joined the Thunderbirds. That's when my first band with and Graham Lyle uh, on saxophone and Henry Boss. Yes. With Peter Robinson on bass, who was from later the Strangers. to join the Strangers. And of course, Graham Lyle was the musical director of uh, he Ed, Hey Hey It's Saturday. Hey Hey It's Saturday. And Don Lane Show. Don Lane Show, and I think Bert Newton Show for You're a right. while. You're right, absolutely. took right. over from Don Lane. Um, so you Don. worked with actually the cream of the crop. Yeah, yeah I did, yeah. Starting out yes. very, very, very young and with the Sapphires as well, is that right? With the Sapphires, I left the Thunderbirds. And, I, and I, uh, I was despondent with the music scene for a while, but when I came back to it, I joined the Sapphires, and that was with uh, Charlie Osborne on guitar, who's, who was a really good guitar player in those days, and, um, and Bruce Rowlands on keyboards. Oh, I know Bruce really well, Bruce, yes. yeah, right. Pianist, and, of course. Yes, and he wrote uh, The Man from Snowy, Snowy River, River, all the music for that, yes. You just said that you were despondent with with music at that stage before yes. you joined those bands what were you despondent about tell us what was uh, going on in the music scene okay. that made you unhappy Why with the situation because we used to play at earl's court three nights a week we had people like cold joy and we had major guests in those yep. days to come and play and we used to get a really good crowd there but uh, we were ripped off something rotten <laughs> i won't say who by but Obviously, it's someone we know. Don't say. No, no, he's long past gone. Now, oh, okay. Yeah. We'll say it. But, uh, no, 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 don't no, say, say it. Don't, 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 don't say it. Don't, don't. <laughs> but anyway, someone will no, get us. Someone will really get us. I was really despondent, for it. and the Thunderbirds actually sort of broke up in those in, then, you know. And some went one way, and, and I remember Peter Robinson and I went another way, and I think Charlie Gould and uh, Henry Boss, I think, because Graham had left the band by then. Henry Boss and uh, Murray Robertson and uh, Harold Frith, the drummer. Yeah, Harold, yeah. Harold, yeah, he's still going. Good on you, Harold. Yeah. And uh, they went another way. And um, so that was the end of that. And I decided not to do anything for a year or two. And when I came back, I joined the Sapphires. And we used to play at the um, Dandenong Town Hall on a Tuesday night. And Mentone Rock on a Saturday night. Fantastic. And, and was that, the Sapphires were more rock? Yeah, they were rock, yeah. yeah. 
Of all the Thunderbirds were robbed. I too, know, yeah. I know they were. Yeah, yeah. Right, no, but Sapphire's played 60 40, actually, uh, on Tuesday night. Like uh, the barn dance, you know, the good old barn dance where yeah. everyone meets everyone. And we sang a white sports coat and a pink carnation, and those sort of things. And then on Saturday night at Mentone Rock, we used to do all rock and roll. And Merv Benton was in the band with us too. Merv and I used to sing. And, uh, and he went on to better things. And so how long were you with The Strangers? Um, that, that was... Because they were very big, weren't they? I joined The Strangers... We, look, Frankie Davidson. You remember Frankie? Yeah, I do. Okay, Frankie Davidson asked me to sing uh, a duet with him called uh, Have You Ever Been to See King's Cross? I sang it the, in the chorus. And it was a huge hit in Sydney, obviously. And he said, uh, you should have a recording contract. So he got me one with W and G. And my first song was with The Strangers. And uh, it was a Ricky Nelson song that hadn't been released in this country. And it's called It's Up To You. Yeah. And it did really well. And so from then on, I got quite a few hits out of W and G. You said, and th we'll take a short break, but when we come back, I want to talk to you about your decision to go solo after that oh, okay. and all of right. your, your hits, yeah, your yeah. chart hits. Yes. We'll be back very shortly with Mr. Colin Cook. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, okay, just go back a little bit to the Thunderbirds because this is very important in, in as much as the way that you became a solo singer. That's right, yes. While I was with the Thunderbirds, we had a singer called Judy Cannon. Um, and she'd already toured, I think, with Cole Joy and the Joy Boys, and she suggested to Cole Joy that I did a tour with them, which I did. And after that, uh, a taste of being on my own as a star, I thought, oh, I like this, you better know. Better being in the band. Better being in the band. So that's basically sowed the seeds of me becoming a solo singer. And you scored a record. Were you still with W? Was it W and G? Or no, I hadn't had a recording contract at that time. Okay. No, I hadn't. You know, it was after that, while I was with the Sapphires, that we recorded with Frankie Davidson the song Have You Ever Been to See King's Cross, which I did a uh, harmony voice to it in the chorus, and that was a big hit for Frankie and Sydney. And he suggested to W&G that I have a recording contract on my own. <clears throat> and my first song was with The Strangers, called It's Up To You, which got, I think, to a number eight or nine on the charts. On the national charts. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. So you're back in Victoria and you're a solo artist by now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to recount, there were quite a few uh, pop shows coming up on telly, weren't there? There were a few, few out of Sydney, but well, Melbourne had... Look, there were Bandstand and Sing 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 were the two main shows. There were others as well. But, and they were out of Sydney, but they? were the they? two main shows, out of Sydney, yes. Yeah. And I remember quite later on, I did Bandstand and with the song I recorded, uh, and it got to, I think, at about number 15 in Sydney or something. So basically, uh, all up, over the period of time on television, you're one of the very few people to have actually had seven hits. Yes, yes, yes. But only three number one, uh, in the top ten, but about seven hits altogether, yes. So... Yeah. And one of them was with, wasn't with W and G, the other six were, but one was with, I left W and G and joined Clarion, which was affiliated with Festival, and I had one hit with them, which was uh, Pocket Full of Rainbows, and after that, I went to England. So what year did you go to That's England? That's 1967. What made you leave to go there? Did you want to further your... I just wanted to see what it was like. Life, yeah. Having come from England, being English, I wanted to go back and just check it out, you know? So do you think for someone that had come from England, apart from the obvious, the fact that you've got a passport yes, and all right, that sort of yes, stuff, a lot yes. easier? Because a lot of acts actually from Australia also decided to go to England. Oh, yeah, well, that's what, see, the Seekers are already been, and oh. they had made a big hit, of, they had a big hit in England. Well, they were huge, they were huge in England, yeah. huge, really big. And 
they'd come back and I thought, yeah, oh, I'd like to go and see what it was like and try and get into the scene, which I went over there full of aspirations with my albums under my arm and I went to see um, um, Peter Gormley, I think it was, and he said, oh, you're just like everyone else here, you know. How rude. Yeah, well, there you go. Now, if you were like Adam Faith and had something different to offer, you know, he had a different type of voice, yeah, we could use you. So, so I, I was brought down to earth quickly. Same thing happened to most of the Aussies that went over to England. Everyone that I've spoken to said that, apart from the Seekers and a couple of other people that snuck in through under the radar, that everyone went there with the, uh, with the hope of making it big in England and just didn't yeah, realise how tough it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it, uh, I didn't think it was that tough, really. I think it's who you knew that counted, really. That's what it was. Because I was touring with John Rolls, JR, he was known as here, he went over to England and he had two top... He had a number one and a top... What was that? And, um, time, I think. Will there ever be time or something like that? Yeah, and then what a, something about Mary. What what a... He had the two Could top tens. Kids, one know. number one and one about number five or six. Yeah. Um, and he made it, so... And I was touring with him. So I thought, well, if he can make it, why can't I? So as you said, it was just being, it, that's something a little bit different. Yeah, that's right, you yeah, know. He was uh, in the uh, Engelbert Humperdinck clone, and Engelbert was doing really well at that time. So, so. that was the difference, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, you ended up um, ended up in musical theatre. Yes, and yes, I did, actually. I managed to get into hair. Can I ask you something? These days when people sort of, audition for musicals you have to be able to dance sing act so I'm presuming that you actually were a bit of a mover as well well no I, yes I was because I went to the dance center and I went there for two years and learned and uh, I managed to do really well and it paid from off. that it paid off because I did hair and and could do all the movements. How was that on the West End? That must have been wonderful. Oh, it was good. Yeah, great. Because the but shows I then went, ran for years. Yeah, but didn't I, they? I, I was there, and then I went on the tour. Uh, we went to Blackpool. It was fantastic there. Really wonderful, you know, because the people in the north of England they'd never seen anything like this, you know, and they're so reserved, and they go, "Oh, I don't know if I like this," you know, and the nude scene the comes nude up. Scene, I was just say, well, yeah. they're all bowing their heads un <laughs> under the <this> scenes. <laughs> <laughs> but a tour there would have been ma marvellous because I've been like to is it, um, Portsmouth and Bournemouth, yes, and all of those places, and I've well, I witnessed guess the beautiful. I did Babes in the Wood in Bournemouth, but aren't the theatres <laughs> wonderful out on the, on yeah, the they jetties? Are. And yeah, and so I, and their uh, pantomimes are great too. You know, at Christmas time, yeah, I did like I did Babes in the Wood in Bournemouth. So really okay, there was hair, which was really the big yes big thing to yes. hit the world really it yes was the first. it was yes and then I came back to Australia and I had a minor hit with a song I wrote called Brill Cream and Blue Suede Shoes can I ask you if you were sort of starting to establish yourself in the theatre in England mm. because you did Superstar there as well well I did Superstar for three years at the Palace Theatre in the West End in London's London West End yeah and Did you after, have a specific well, role in that? Yeah, I played uh, Annas, the, one of the priests. OK, we'll, we'll go to a short break because I want to now try and catch up with what we're doing these days. OK. What you're up to these days, because yes. I know for a fact that you're gigging around town. Yes. So we'll take a short break and okay. we'll be back soon. Thanks, Wendy. Rockdown. Welcome back to Rockdown. My special guest... Very interesting guest this evening, Mr. Colin Cook. We were just having a little chat. And uh, apart from your going to tell us about your little uh, gig on a boat outside New York, oh, a yeah, casino. Yeah, but right. before we do that, you just mentioned all of these wonderful things you did on television in England. Oh, Please yeah, yeah, yeah. I me. forgot about that. I, did, I worked with the two Ronnies. Yeah. Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Fantastic. Corbett, yeah. We did some skits together, you know, acting skits, yeah. yes. And also I did two weeks with Doctor Who 
as a, as a, I was a cybernaut warrior fighting the lizard men. <laughs> <laughs> This is fantastic. Can you believe that? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that was for two. And Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I did that. Uh, I can't remember what else you I really, did. You really, really got around because Gee, before you were also, um, or you touched on a, a little segment of your life where you worked on a boat out of New York. Yeah, yeah I worked on a, a casino. Flo- floating casino because there's no uh, gambling in New York. So we, we used to have drive, we used to float three miles out on a on a uh, ocean liner. And they had a big casino there, and I was in the entertainment group that did the entertaining. It was like Las so would, Vegas, would, you know. Would they, would they come in, change They come in twice a week and get new people in and take them out. And So, OK, you've uh, been playing with bands down in Melbourne at the Fleece and several other clubs? Yes, and uh, around mainly around Macedon area, so I don't have to travel too far. But I, before I had my stroke, I used to go to Moorabbin Town Hall do the Elvis Presley dance gigs, you know, because um, they have quite a big gig. They have 1,000 to 1,200 people turn up. Well, you know what? You those. actually look amazing. No one would have known that you've been through all of that health okay, now, situation. Let me you're tell absolutely you, fabulous. Re- let me tell you what keeps you going. To keep your face looking young, you've got to put oil of ule on your face and retin-A cream. Retin A, you now, know. I hope we're all getting. Oh yeah, listen to that. Retin A cream, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's about forty dollars a tube, <laughs> but it really works miracles. <laughs> it makes your skin. This lady it's come fantastic. up to me. The this, chemists are going to be now, sold now out. Now tomorrow. listen to me. This lady came up to me. I did a gig two weeks ago uh, in Kyneton, and she said, "You've got a face like a baby's bottom." <laughs> <laughs> Well, you do. You, honestly, you do look amazing, and, and the reason I say that is Dear my mum had a stroke, and of course she was unfortunately um, paralysed. Yeah, I was. My well, mouth you, was drooping down. You, it's but amazing. Look, um, you've got to do a lot of exercise, and there was a show on today with a young lass about twenty. She had a massive stroke, and in the old days they said once you had a stroke, you're in yourself and you can't do anything. You know, you live inside yourself, but. It's exercise, and they, she's managed to, to walk again almost. Yes, physio. Well, my my um, neurosurgeon told me, stop smoking, don't drink whiskey anymore, because whiskey, smoking whiskey and wild, wild women, that was the order of the day with the musicians. So what, <laughs> if, what, if, what do you drink instead? I drink red wine. That's yes. good for you. Yeah, do you like red wine? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Love a bit of red uh, wine. Yes, and I do have a... a uh, gin and tonic. I like gin and tonic. Well, let me yeah. tell you, you are a joy. You're an absolutely amazing person, and I congratulate you on just the courage. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. And it, before I go, Pilates is a wonderful thing to do. <laughs> Pilates. So hang on, it let's keeps recap. You supple. Oil of you lamb. Yes. Retin A. Retin A. Pilates. Cream. Pilates. And red wine. Yes, that's right. Would All you right? please thank this wonderful man, yeah. Colin Cook? Thank you. <laughs> I was a callow youth, I wore beetle boots, I wore bull neck skivvy and a house to suit. I had a wispy old beard, I thought it looked so cute. I don't 
Keep 